So it's about 800 people in one of the most beautiful theater in the world. So I'm not nervous at all. Uh, <laughs> uh, and I got just 10 minutes, so let's start. In the next 10 minutes, I'm going to explain you how to make money drinking coffee. And I'm not joking, I spent the last 20 years with startup and tech companies, some very big, sold for over 15 billion, some very small, some very bankrupt. Oh, so in order to understand how to make money today, I'm going to jump a couple of, that, that was the original title. <laughs> so I'm going to jump my introduction because we don't really have enough time, and go back. And um, so in order to understand how to make money today, we should talk a bit about our fathers. And I'm not speaking about my father, I'm not speaking about the founding father, I'm speaking about these fathers, the original fathers. And stay with me, because I swear it's connected to making money today. So back in the days, and we can really say back in the days here, our ancestors, the Homo sapiens, were some of the weakest creatures in nature. Their competitor, the Neanderthal, was stronger and faster. And then something happened. We were restricted in a small area of the world because we were so weak. And this area was what is today the Northeast Africa. We crossed over the Middle East to conquer the war. Guess what happened? The Neanderthal beat the hell out of us. It's like this weak kid fighting against the bully in school. He has no chance. Well, technically, in this case, we were both the weak kid and the bully, since we invade them. And I believe this is part of our nature as well. So then something changed. Our ancestor, the Homo sapiens, he started dreaming. He started dreaming about nations. He started dreaming about religion. He started dreaming years later about money. He started dreaming about concepts that doesn't exist in nature. In fact, you cannot touch them. Think about money. You have a small piece of plastic in your wallet or a small piece of paper in your pockets. And yet, you can go to the shop and buy the last smartphone. Why? Because everybody believes that this piece of paper has a value. So what happened next? We cross over again, and this time, tens of thousands of Homo sapiens clashed against small village of Neanderthals, organized as nations. And we all know the end results. The Neanderthal doesn't exist anymore, they got extinct. And every time in human history, this concept of nation, religion, money, change their own nature, someone or something got extinct. If you think a change in the economy and in government, wipe out the Middle Age, uh, a change in the concept of government and the French Revolution, why it the government of the time, and so on, until now. And now this is happening again, because the concept of money is changing and someone is going to get extinct. And I'm not just speaking about big banks or big insurance company. They will eventually extinct if they don't adapt, or they will improve and grow if they do, but I'm speaking about the life of everybody here in this theater. If we adapt, we understand this new kind of money, we can improve our life, or else we are going to live a life of misery. And you can see from the news in the world that sometimes this is happening already. So we are moving from a world of digital money to what we call a war of mobile money. And mobile smartphone is only a piece of the story. This is not a technical revolution. This is a cultural revolution 
this is going to change our lifestyle, this is going to change our human relationship. In fact, this is happening already. Our fathers, they were used to live in a world of digital money. That means that they were not using gold coins, they were not using paper notes. Well, they were using paper notes, but that was not the main feature, no? The main feature was these digital numbers on a server in a bank, with the bank acting as a gatekeeper. You want to apply for a loan, you want to apply for a credit card, you go to a bank. That's the era of the digital money. And now we are moving to an era of mobile money, where mobile is just part of the story, and yet we tend to call them mobile money because this is a big part of the story. Why it's part of the story? Well, about 7 billion people live on this planet. Over 2 billion people doesn't have a bank account, doesn't have a credit card, and yet many of them, they have a mobile phone. And these people were completely excluded until yesterday from what we call a normal life. No loan, no mortgage no chance to open a shop. And even if you open a shop, you have to deal with cash. That is harder and it's riskier. You can be robbed. And then companies like M-Pesa came on the market. And M-Pesa is an African company. They empower people to have a wallet and to exchange money with a simple mobile phone. In fact, you don't need a, a complex smartphone you just need a mobile phone like the one in the picture. That means two billion people finally have an access to the market. Entire villages can buy medicine online. Entire villages of unemployed people can set up shop. They can send their kids to school. The change for us is going to be massive. We don't see it too much today in the Western countries, but this is happening in the other half of the globe. And whoever like us work in this area and travel a lot, see that the change is going to impact our life, not just our technology. So the new money are more inclusive. We pick the magic carp, a Pokemon there, as a symbol, because it's one of the weakest Pokemon. And yet, the moment that it grow, it become a badass dragon. And this is what's happening in the biggest area of the world, with the biggest population. That means that two billion people doesn't need a gatekeeper anymore. And in the future, maybe, we are not going to need a gatekeeper. Because when we talk about money, the what we call developing countries sometimes are more advanced than us. And they see a future in the next five years where they are going to export the technology in our country, not vice versa, as in the past. Now look at this picture. This was taken in Malaysia. I don't know if you see it, but this is a bride that is paying the dowry to her future husband with a mobile phone. And they don't see anything strange in that. They are digital natives. They are used to use the mobile. They are not used to apply to a loan to a bank like us. And to be fair, you can see from the photo, they are quite wealthy. So they would have married anyway, mobile phone or not mobile phone. But for many, many millions of people every year, this is not true. Think about Indonesia. 250 million people. Just to give you an idea, the United States are a bit more than 300 million. The biggest country in Europe, Germany, is a bit more than 80 million. Indonesia alone is 250 million people. And millions of people don't marry, don't set up a family, don't get kids, because they don't have money to pay a wedding. And Southeast Asia is a bit like the Latin country, Italy, Spain, if you don't have money, no matter if you're rich or poor, you're not going to marry 
unless you can impress your neighbors with a great wedding. And this might sound irrational to many of us, but that's the culture. And then companies like Wedlight came to the market, and Wedlight provide loans online and through mobile to couples that want to marry. And the next step is crowdfunding, Kickstarter for wedding, with the difference that because your mobile phone allows the tech companies to localize you, they can send and propose your crowdfunding campaign to your neighbors. They know you, they know if they can trust you or not. So imagine this scene in the evening, look into their mobile. Well, darling, Bill is looking for money, he want to get married. I know this guy, he's a serious guy. I believe I'm going to loan him money. Do you agree? Well, I don't know Bill so well, but I know his mom. And if he doesn't pay, his mom is going to beat the hell out of him. So yeah, we can give him money. <laughs> So the new money, and if you believe, by the way, that this crowdfunding is like a fantasy, look to Mchanga in Africa. We'll go to Europe and the US in the next catch about the new mobile money. I'm particularly proud of this company because they train in London in one of the programs where I mentor, start a bootcamp, and then they went back to Africa and set up this amazing company. And they provide crowdfunding campaign where the entire community of a village put the money in a sort of common box, a common pot, and then they use the money to help people in needs. They don't have a gatekeeper. You see the difference? There is no bank here, no credit card, no insurance company. Things are changing. The new money are more collaborative. And being inclusive doesn't mean that money are good, money are not good or bad, Banks are not good or bad, it depends from us, but the technology is changing. So, third catch. The new money have three main differences. So we say they are more inclusive, they are collaborative, they are smarter. In the United States, companies like Acorns, and in the UK, companies like Moneybox, they round up your change when you buy a coffee. And here it is where we go back to the beginning of our story. You go to Starbucks, you got your $2.75 coffee, and you pay $3. Where these 25 cents go? They go to your personal investment fund run by an artificial intelligence. And to be fair, artificial intelligence is a buzzword is mostly used for marketing yet, but this is not going to be true anymore for the next couple of years. Actually, they exist already. Last year, just last year, I saw a small team of French programmers coding their own artificial intelligence to trade on the market in four months without resources. So if you think, until yesterday, that was science fiction you can access an artificial intelligence from a piece of plastic in your pocket. If you're a fan of Star Trek, like me, you can recall that the crew of the Enterprise has access to a supercomputer, but not to an artificial intelligence. So we are far more advanced than Star Trek. We live in a moment of the human evolution where a science fiction book may look a manual for dummy. And you can tweet that, by the way. So, let's close and ask the last quote to Liza. Many people in this audience, especially the people that are going to look this video on a smartphone, they will probably not recognize this movie. That's Cabaret, 1972. So many of you were not born at the time. And Liza Minelli, the actress on the scene was used to sing, money makes the world go round. So if money makes the world go round, what happened when the money changed their own nature? Nobody knows exactly, although whoever works in this field, we see some clear trends and patterns. 
But every time this concept of money, nation, religion has changed in the human history, someone got extinct. And again, in the next year, it's probably going to happen to some banks and insurance company. Other banks and insurance company are going to grow, but this is not a phenomena of banks. This is a phenomena that is going to affect you and me and us, people. So you can improve your life or not, depending on your level of understanding and adaptation of the new money. So the, there is a message here. Please adapt. Don't be an Neanderthal. Thank you.